to the Night Club, guys. It's your host, the Night Rancher. I had a pretty long day at work today, and I got home, and I, I took another gander at all the comments you guys left me at the uh, carburetor giveaway. Uh, oh, yeah. We're doing a carburetor giveaway. Link somewhere over here. And I was thinking that a lot of people don't seem to understand how vacuum secondary carburetors work. And for a while, I thought I had it. I thought I understood um, but then I started thinking about it more and I'm like, no, that doesn't make any sense. So I thought about it more, researched more, and then eventually I came to the conclusion of how it's supposed to work. This is a Holly 600, one of the aluminum carburetors. This was on a uh, Dodge 360. It ended up getting a lot of the, uh, the accelerator pump was stuck and then the everything here was stuck and it, it just got all messy from not using it. We pulled this off, got another 600, threw it on there, and it was all good to go. So I've got this one apart, and I haven't had a chance to put it all back together. This one does not have a metering block in the back. This one has a metering plate. Uh, apparently, this one is for the equivalent of a 73 Jet. Uh, we'll talk about that in a later video. What I want to focus on right now is the vacuum secondary. And the basic description is like this. When you're accelerating, you're only driving on the primaries. Once the engine sees uh, demand for more fuel, it'll start to open the secondary. So you'll accelerate, the engine will see that it needs more air, and it's just gonna, as you accelerate more, the secondaries are gonna open. Uh, in a mechanical secondary, they'll open up almost together. This one will open a little bit more, and then this will open, and then they finally go wide open throttle together. Vacuum secondary ends up doing this while you're driving and the reason for that is you have this diaphragm and inside the diaphragm you have a spring everybody seems to get that part that one's pretty self-explanatory I've got a spring right here uh, I don't have the diaphragm on me um, I don't feel like pulling off part one of the carburetors to pull the diaphragm out but basically you got the spring inside of this this diaphragm right and as vacuum is being pulled it pulls vacuum along this chamber so there's a Actually, I can show you on this one. On the vacuum secondary carburetors, one of the holes here, this one precisely, is drilled out for a vacuum port. And the other side of the vacuum port leads to right here, right toward the bottom of the booster, right here in the middle of the Venturi where the strongest signal for vacuum is. All right, so you're accelerating. As you're accelerating, you're, you're pulling vacuum in through the primary throttle blades. The secondaries won't open up even though you've got a little bit of throttle and that's because of the secondary linkage that's over here the way you can get into your secondaries is by meeting the criteria first even if you've got enough vacuum at idle let's say you have 20 pounds of vacuum at idle your secondaries won't open even if you crack the throttle a little bit your secondaries are not going to open and that's because you have some you have this little linkage here You've got this little bit of room before you actually are allowed to go into the secondaries. If, if for example, this was uh, maybe a little bit shorter or modified or something, as soon as you'd be accelerating, you'd be immediately going into the secondary. So this rod is to prevent you from going into the secondaries too early. So once you're, once let's say you're at half throttle, now that you've passed the requirement of the minimum amount of throttle that you need, now you're allowed to open the secondaries. So we go back to the Venturi that's up in here. When you open up the primaries, you get what's called ported vacuum. Ported vacuum is a vacuum above the throttle plate. And you've got manifold vacuum that's under the throttle plate. If you attach a vacuum gauge at the base plate, you're probably going to be reading manifold vacuum. Manifold vacuum won't be the same as ported vacuum until the throttle is open. When you crack open the throttle, your ported vacuum will start climbing. You'll actually get suction through here. You do get a tiny bit of suction when the throttle is closed because of the transfer slot, but not enough to make a big difference. The more you accelerate, the more air that flows through it, the more vacuum that's created and pulling more air through the Venturi. So you have to go at least halfway through the throttle. That'll give you enough vacuum to start pulling on the diaphragm right here. But what happens when you go wide open throttle? and there's no more vacuum. Well, the engine's always going to be producing vacuum if there's always a restriction. Let's say you have this carburetor on a 440, 454. At wide open throttle, 
your engine's going to be choking for power if the secondaries don't open up. Which means if it's choking for power, it's going to be pulling vacuum even at wide open throttle because this becomes a restriction. Because you still have vacuum in the primary throttle blades, now your secondaries will open up until you run out of vacuum. So if you're driving and you decide to get on the freeway and you floor it, well now you're pulling vacuum, now you're, the spring inside has got to fight the vacuum, the vacuum starts pulling on it and it delays the opening and starts slowly opening. Well, you've actually reached your maximum airflow at right here. Your throttle blades aren't going to fully open. They're only going to get to this far. If we take a 4289 and put a 750 on there, when you floor it, you're more than likely going to run out of vacuum very quickly. And your secondaries are only going to open up very slightly. If you put a small carburetor on a big engine, your secondaries are going to open up almost all the time as soon as you get on it. This is a big reason why you can install a big carburetor like a 750 on let's say a 289, a 302 because you're mainly running on the primary. So half of a 750 is a 375. So the, the majority of your driving is a 375. Once you floor it and the vacuum starts pulling against the diaphragm, now you have a 400, now you have a 425, now you have a 450, now you have a 500. And, oh, Oh, we've already we've already reached maximum limit. Let me close it. Oh, we got vacuum again. Let me open it. Oh, we ran out of vacuum. Let me close it. And so the carburetor is doing this the whole time on the secondaries, which is a big reason why racers don't like vacuum secondary carburetors because they're a little more unpredictable. For daily driving applications and cruisers and things like that, vacuum secondary is an excellent carburetor. It makes tuning super easy because you mainly only have to focus on the primary and the secondary open only opens up sometimes and because it doesn't open up all the time most of the fuel is coming from the power valve and the secondaries have little to nothing to do with it which is why the secondaries are almost always fueled a little too rich just to compensate for the small amount that it ends up opening even though it's a small amount you still have a good amount of fuel going because a lot of people like to oversize their carburetors for their application. People do race with vacuum secondary carburetors, but what they do is that when they start on the starting line, they go ahead and they prep their engine, they run, they turn on the trans brake and they start, they stall their their transmission and they, they get their engine revved up and then so the engine will start pulling manifold vacuum and it's gonna reach its, its peak point before you actually start. The rest of the run is basically done with the carburetor at wide open throttle. What you don't seem to remember is in between shifts, you do tend to get back a little bit of that vacuum. And so the throttle blades, if they're not fully open, they're gonna go, they're gonna kinda like blip. So in between the shifts, they're gonna do like, like kinda like this. And sometimes you'll see lean spots. So that about does it. I haven't seen too many people explain vacuum secondary carburetors like this. I hope this kinda makes sense. Uh, if there's anything you guys don't understand, you guys can always put it down in the comments below. I will see you guys all in the next one. Good luck on the giveaway. Night Wrencher, out.